the power in your voice. I teach a lot about how powerful your words are. And our words are extremely powerful. And the way we say them, the emotion in them, is what everybody is searching for to find. And that's the power in your words. Unfortunately, Neville's teaching that is taught by so many people say feeling is the secret. Feeling is the secret. So how do you find the power in your voice to be able to feel because that's the secret to getting whatever you want? Gets a little confusing. This is Susie, your beautiful millionaire swan queen. Welcome back to the garden, my beautiful ducklings. Subscribe, smash the like button, share my videos. I would truly, truly appreciate it. Also, I have changed the way I do my email coachings. Instead of five emails or 10 emails back and forth between us, consider it a coaching session, only we're doing it through email. A lot of my clients are not in a position where they can talk on the phone or do a video chat. So the emails are taking too long and I don't think they benefit you to go back and forth if they're taking weeks or months to do in cases. But the 30 minute mini session or the hour that you get, it is unlimited back and forth during that time frame to help drastically change your life for the better. I still do video calls as well as my po coaching packages, but I wanted you guys to know that I changed it to better assist you. So back to finding the power in your voice. So we know I talk about power words. Always and now are going to be the top two power words that you have in your vocabulary. Now is the present. It means you get whatever you want and you want it now. So if you say, I am now happily married. I am now a happy millionaire. I am now happy in my job. I am now happy with the way my children are cleaning their rooms. I'm now happy that they sleep in their own room and not all over my furniture so I can't get up in the morning and make coffee. Think about the different ways that we say, I want something. Well, when you say, I'm happy, put now in there. I am now happy. The other thing is if you're wanting to revise a situation. So the children sleeping all over your couch analogy. It's they're not in school. They're up late. They're watching TV. They're playing video games. They have their friends over. They crash and they fall asleep on your beautiful couch and you want to get up in the morning and you want to have a cup of coffee and you can't do it. Well, this is where the word always comes in. They always sleep in their bed. Why do they always sleep in their bed? Even when they have company, why do they always sleep in their bed? Why do they always go to bed at 10 o'clock sharp? Always. It revises it. So that puts it in the past, saying that this was always done. It is the present, the now, because they're now doing it as well. And it projects into the future. So you have now, the present, always, past, present, future. And those are two extremely powerful words. Now, I don't like words like manifesting because a lot of people come to me and they're like, I'm manifesting X, Y, Z, and I don't have it. I'm doing all the tips, the techniques, and the tools, yet it's still not showing up. And they're using the word manifesting. So to them, the meaning is I am working to get something I know I don't have. And I don't like that when they come to me. So manifesting can be a potty word like only is to me. If you are using it properly, I can manifest anything I want quickly, easily, effortlessly in the most fun and adventurous way. Awesome sauce. But if not, we got to find a better way to do it. The next thing is connecting the dots. And that's what your words do. They connect the dots between what you are trying to create and what you are actually receiving. So you are trying to create a relationship with your specific person. You are trying to create a relationship to get a specific job. You are trying to create a better relationship with money. In Susie's world, 
everything is a relationship and everything you don't want is a third party. So it's not the woman or the guy that's with the love of your life that's a third party. It's the person who has your job. It is the reason you're not getting something you want. It is your words. Your words can be a third party. Well, I've had a bunch of coaching clients in the last few weeks and I have to connect them to the power of their words. And one of them I used the singing analogy on because this person sings. If you are a singer and you are singing a song, Elvis was told that he could not record the song in the ghetto because it would ruin his career. Well, Elvis recorded it and it didn't ruin his career. His career is still going well after he has passed on. We all love the song, Carrie Underwood, I dug my keys into the side of his pretty little four-wheel drive. Those songs had power to them. Whitney Houston's I'll Always Love You. We all love that song. And everybody's like, I want to sing that song at my wedding. So how do I get this song at my wedding? Well, in order to get this song at your wedding, look at the words. And the words that you are singing. I'll Always Love You is amazing. But she was leaving the person she loved knowing they couldn't be together. Whitney had a miscarriage during the making of the movie The Bodyguard. So the loss of her child was the power in the song. When Elvis sang in the ghetto, we don't know what he lost. But Elvis always sang to his mother. So in Whitney's case, the muse in an artistic world was the lost child. In Elvis's case, the muse was his mother. He always sang to her. His first recording was done in a studio and he was recording a song for his mother. And that's when somebody thought, wow, this guy can really sing. Let's take a look at it. So let's look at your words and how are you singing them? And I know people don't like to hear the church word, but we're going to put the church word out there. If you were in the church singing the song, how does it feel? What type of emotion are you putting in it? The reason everybody loves the Carrie Underwood song is because it's a breakup song. And that emotion that's poured into the breakup is exactly why you guys are wanting to get the love of your life back. So when you are trying to get the love of your life back, you have to connect the power of your words to what you're physically thinking and saying. So if you're scripting, if you're speaking it, if you're saying it silently in your head, the power of your words are the ones you speak out loud. That's going to be your dominant thought. And how are you speaking about that dominant thought? Are you saying I'm blessed because I have this amazing relationship? Or are you saying I am happily married to this person and it's not working? Why am I happily married to this person? Well, how long do I have to say this phrase? Your power is not in your voice. Your power is in, well, I shouldn't say that. Your power is in your voice, but it's in the wrong direction. You are saying, I'm walking around saying I'm happily married, but how long do I have to say this? It's a chore. It's not fun. So you're singing monotone and you are doing a G flat. Now, if you want to sing a high C, you are going to have to bring up your level of emotion. So when you are angry and you are frustrated and you are happy and you are sad, it doesn't matter. The joy can come out in your song as well as the anger. Think about the movie Monsters, Inc. They were using the children's nightmares and their screams to use to create the electricity for their city but they found out when the children laughed they got way more electricity and that's what we're looking for in this we are looking for a way for you guys to find your song what are you singing the words that are coming out of your mouth are your dominant thoughts and those are your power and that is the power in your words and that's why i teach so much Words matter 
because you can think in your head and you can say in your head all the time, I am happily married. Why am I so happily married to Jared? Why am I so happily married to Jared? I've always been happily married to Jared. I'm now happily married to Jared. And you can do it until the cows come home. You can literally do it till you're blue in the face. You can do it 86,400 seconds a day and you're not getting a result. But why are you not getting a result? Because your actual power is, when is it gonna happen? What if it never happens? Why do I have to do this? How long do I have to do this? Conscious creating is a life choice. It is something you will do every day for the rest of your life, whether you realize it or not. So you walk around and you say, I am beyond blessed. Why am I beyond blessed? I say spoiled, beyond blessed. I am beyond blessed. I am so beyond blessed. My life is absolutely amazing. I am beyond blessed. My daughter this morning wanted a thing from Starbucks. She bought Starbucks this morning because I was willing to go two blocks to get Starbucks when she's pregnant and didn't feel like it. Okay, I'll go get Starbucks. I got Starbucks. That's why I am beyond blessed. I did a favor for her. I got free coffee. I do favors for other people and I don't get anything. I don't expect the person I'm doing a favor to give it back to me. So the words in my voice that bring power is, I am spoiled and the universe shows me in amazing ways that I always like. And it has been my default for almost four years now. Come Christmas time, it'll be four years. So I am well over three years of saying, why am I spoiled? My song I'm singing is, people do nice things for me. So take your words and put it in a song and see how it feels to sing them. Can you actually sing this with pure, raw emotion? Sing it in the shower because that's where you're going to find the power of your voice. Quickly, easily, and the most effortless way, you can change your life for the better. But if you don't do the work, you don't go a little dumpster diving sometimes, it's not going to change. Your thoughts, your words, they have to line up in order for you to get whatever you want. And here's the beauty. I can legit say, my life sucks. Oh my God, I have the most horrible life in the world, but I always get the guy of my dreams. I'm saying my life sucks, but I get the guy of my dreams. The power in my words. I get the guy in my dreams. It doesn't matter that my life sucks. I still get him. Now I can say I have the most amazing life. I am living my dream life. I am so happily living my dream life. But I never get the guy. So I'm living my dream life, but I don't get the guy. Everything else I get quickly, easily, effortlessly, but not the guy. That's the power of your words. And when you find your voice, in your words, you're going to find out that you connected the dots to everything that you are working to consciously create in your life across the board, and it is drastically going to change the way you create the rest of your life. You guys have an absolutely positively amazing day. I love you, and as always, tell me how what I'm sharing with you is drastically changing your life for the better.